JavaScript is a powerful scripting language that is best known for working in a web browser. It is based on events, such as moving a mouse over something, clicking a cursor button, or pressing a key on your keyboard. This video will guide you through the process of creating a simple image carousel to change pictures and text associated with those pictures in a web page. Make sure you have downloaded the code file found in the page where this video is located. The file must be unzipped and the folder moved into the Sandbox Site folder. This video uses NetBeans as the development environment. If you are using a different tool, you will need to adjust the directions to use your tool. Locate the Rotator folder in the Sandbox and right-click on it. In the Options menu, select New, then JavaScript File. If that option is not available, choose Other. In the dialog box that opens, select Other in the Categories menu and JavaScript File in the File Types. Click Next. Name the file Rotator. NetBeans will automatically add the .js file extension. Click Finish. Open the index file and move to the bottom of the file. You will see a comment telling you to add the script element there. Write the script element as shown in the video. This tells the web browser that the JavaScript to be used is found in the rotator.js file. By writing the JavaScript externally, we are following best practice in web development. In the rotator.js file, change the default comment to something that indicates that this file will control an image carousel. The first two lines to be added tell JavaScript what two HTML elements it will be working with. The first is an image element for displaying pictures, and the second is a fig caption element where we can display text describing the picture. We use the document.getElementById to do this. The HTML element information is stored into a JavaScript variable for later use. If you look at the index file, you will see that the image and fig caption elements both have ID attributes that allow them to be uniquely identified. Next, two arrays will be created. An array is a specialized type of variable that can hold more than one value. Arrays have indexes or keys that allow the information inside to be identified. Index numbers in an array always start at zero. Because we are only entering the contents and not indicating a specific index of our own, the browser adds its own numeric index behind the scene, starting at zero and counting up from there until each item in the array has an index. The first array is the location and name of images to be part of the carousel. The second array is text associated with the pictures. Please note that the array names reflect the information stored in them. That is best practice. Two more variables will be added next. These variables will tell the JavaScript which picture to start with when the carousel begins to run. You will see that we are starting with the second item. That is because the first item, the zero-indexed picture and text, are hard-coded into the web page. By being hard-coded into the page, it guarantees that both a picture and text will be there, even if the JavaScript cannot run. This is referred to as bulletproofing our page. Now we will write a JavaScript function. This function is what makes the carousel actually work. The first two lines tell JavaScript to change the HTML attribute source and alt 
in the image element to the index value found in the image array and caption array respectively. The third line writes new text into the fig caption element with the same text that will be written to the image element's alt attribute. The next two lines increment or add 1 to the current value of the image index and caption index respectively. So if they were 1, they would be increased to 2. The next four lines are a test and what to do if the test is true. The test is to see if the value of the image index variable is greater than or equal to the number of items in the image array. If the answer is yes, the image index and caption index values are set to zero. This will result in the carousel starting over with the first item in each array. The last line of the function is the right curly brace which ends the function. The next line of code creates a variable that uses the JavaScript setInterval function. This is a timer that executes some functionality, in our case the changeImage function, every stated duration of time. JavaScript time is measured in milliseconds, thousandths of a second. In our case, the changeImage function will occur every 5 seconds or 5,000 milliseconds. Finally, we will add two event handlers to cause the carousel to stop and start. An event handler is what it sounds like. It does something, handles it, when an event occurs. The first event says that if the mouse moves on top using the on mouse over event of the display image variable, the image element, then the clear interval function will be activated and the carousel will stop. The clear interval function is a built-in JavaScript function. The second event simply restarts the carousel from the last image that was displayed. In effect, these two event handlers work as a pause and play for the carousel simply by moving the mouse over or off the image. With the JavaScript file complete and connected to the HTML file, be sure everything is saved and uploaded to the server. Then bring the index page up into a browser. In about five seconds, the image and the caption should change, and that should continue every five seconds. Once you are sure things are working, place your mouse over the picture. The rotation should stop. Move the cursor away from the picture and in 5 seconds the rotation should begin again. If it does not work, double check your code against the code in the video or in the written tutorial. If you still have trouble, talk with a classmate or someone else familiar with JavaScript and get some help.